Hi, today we'll be going over how to configure a Gemini GV or GT drive. By the end of the session, you'll be able to use Motion Planner software to upload a drive's motor configuration file and download into a new drive. Optionally, I'll show you how to do an auto run to confirm the motor is working okay. You'll need the drive powered on. The GV L3 and Gemini Stepper GT and GT6 drives take 120 volt AC only. The GV U3, U6, U12 take 120 or 240 volts AC. The H20 is 240 volts AC. Alternately, you can use 24 volts into the Keep Alive to upload and download. Without line power, though, you won't be able to do the auto run test. You'll need a serial crossover cable, which is a null modem. Our part number is 71 016939 10 and is a CE rated cable. A PC with motion planner software. It's a free download from our website, and I'll come back to that in a minute. For PCs without a 9 pin COM port, you'll need a USB to RS232 adapter. We recommend using the Cables Unlimited USB 2920 adapter. This has the FTDI chipset and works with all of our products on both Windows XP and Windows 7. It's available at Amazon.com. Not all USB serial adapters work the same. If you aren't using one with the FTDI chipset, it may or may not work. Note, the prolific chipset does not work on Windows 7. It does work on XP. You do not need the motor to be connected to upload and download. If you want to do a spin test of the motor, you'll need either a GC50 or Jum VM50 with pins 1 and 2 jumpered, which is the hardware enable. Obviously, the motor with power and feedback cables as well. Motion Planner 4.3.2 is a free download. Go to our website www.parkermotion.com. On the top right hand corner, click on Support and Downloads, then Download Product Software. Select Motion Planner. Click the checkbox and submit. You'll need to register if you haven't downloaded before. After registering, you'll be at the download page. Go ahead and start Motion Planner software. The drive should be powered on with your serial cable connected to your USB adapter. Uh, when you first open up Motion Planner, you'll have the default communication settings. Here you can see the Gemini. Uh, I've got a GV servo drive, so I've got that selected here, you, or you can select the GT stepper drive. We also, uh, the Motion Planner is also used with the 6K and the Gem 6K and the GT6 and the GV6. Those will be covered in different videos. Click on uh, the port tab and you can see the port setting there. To confirm your COM number, go into your start menu and then go into your control panel. Go into device manager and under ports you should see the COM number. The USB adapters sometimes do not come up as COM1, so you can take a look at those. If you double click on there or right click and go on to properties, you can see the manufacturer which displays the chipset that's in there. If you click on the port, port settings tab, that will allow you to see the communications. Those are already set when um, motion planner software is being used so you do not need to change the baud rate settings or the number of data bits or stop bits from here those are already configured when you open up motion planner then if you click on the advanced tab you can actually change the port number uh, the, the com number sometimes though when you do that you will have to restart your computer So from the device manager, we've confirmed that the COM port number is set, and then we go ahead and select that and press OK. So you'll see a terminal tab and a editor tab open up on the bottom there, and then you'll notice on the bottom right hand corner with the Gemini, either a GT or GV, that the um, COM port number is shown in the status bar and that it is in binary communication. It is not ASCII, so there is a COM6 server that is running in the background, so all the commands that you type in the terminal window are actually going through that translator being converted to binary, and so are the responses. But that's running in the background, you shouldn't have to worry about that. 
Um, if you click on the terminal window, if you're connected to the drive, press enter a couple times, you should get a carriage prompt, then type TREV, T-R-E-V. Um, that's a tell revision command. You should see the drive part number and then also the firmware and the drive revision levels. So you can see this is a 1.00 for the firmware version. If you then go into the editor tab, you can go into uh, communications, then upload editor. That's going to warn you that it's going to overwrite what's in the editor. Um, and then it does support RS-232 daisy chaining. I'm presuming that just uh, you're communicating to one drive, so go ahead and you can use the defaults and press OK. It will then retrieve um, the motor configuration files. This is a original firmware version 1.0. There were multiple commands added after the initial release. So this is just saying that the COM6 server is not getting any response to these. Uh, those commands were added into the COM6 server after the release. So um, it's just warning you that you're not getting a response from that. That's fine. Uh, if you're getting a new drive, um, you can download these same files, the other default settings for those other commands that um, will be fine to use. So here um, you can see the entire uh, motor configuration file. Now if you want to then uh, power down, connect to your new drive, first thing to do is go ahead and go into the terminal window. You can see uh, the, from the previous the upload what the what was going on in the background so if you type trev and confirm that you're setting now let's uh let's presume this is a new gemini drive out of the box so actually i'm going to do an rfs on my old drive to make it look like exactly a new drive so after i do a rfs that's a reset factory setting it's going to wipe out the drive and if you type dmtr you'll get a minus one so I'm that's the initial setting saying that there is no motor configuration at all. Um, if you click on your editor tab, you could type any of the other commands like DMTIC was 1.99. You can see the default value without any motor configuration is zero. So zero for the continuous current. You're not going to get much torque out of there. Um, but so you can confirm. So you can see that we've got basically a new drive, no motor configuration, go into the editor tab, go into download uh, the editor. You can also go into communications, download editor, does the same thing. Uh, download to all drives, press OK. It's going to then do a reset on, um, on the drive. So you'll see the yellow LED on the right go active for a couple seconds. As it's rebooting, then it should go back red light. Uh, on the left and then you're good. Uh, the so then if you go into the terminal window you can see uh, after it reboots it does the uh, trev command and then the type dmtr and you can see it's uh, 1305 which matches what's in the motor configuration file. You can spot check any of the other commands uh, like uh, depot is uh, 2 and that is what is in the editor file right there so that is the drive is now configured and you're free to uh, power down walk that out to the machine connect it up to the motor and you should be good to go if you want to optionally do a spin test then go into the terminal window and type D mode and you can see that um, this Gemini drive is set up in torque mode for like a 6K or a uh, ACR9000 multi-axis controller uh, would normally be sending it the analog signal. Um, the auto run mode is D mode 13, so uh, D mode 13, we enter that. Uh, the stepper drives would be uh, D mode 6, which is uh, step and direction mode. So go ahead and t type uh, D mode 13. The drive will be in auto run mode, but you have not connected your, uh, go ahead and connect your GC50 or your Gem VM50 with pins 1 and 2 jumpered. Going to go ahead and plug mine in. The uh, left LED turns green and then the right 
one flashes uh, red and green and then the motor is turning one revolution per second. Then the uh, note on the servo motors is not actually looking at the feedback, it is actually just running the motor phases in open loop. So if you're looking at the motor shaft, it's turning, should be turning clockwise. If not, then you've got uh, accidentally a couple of the motor phases switched. Same thing on a stepper. If you want the other direction to be considered positive, you can power down, switch just the A plus and the A minus, that they will be then re running a reverse. Servo motors, obviously three phases have to be commutated aligned with the Hall effects on, uh, on power up. So it should be then incrementing the encoder if you just type TPE in the terminal window and you can see that it is incrementing um, albeit slowly but you are getting feedback on there and then um, if you do a drive zero that is a software disable you can you can then pull the um, the hardware disable or power down um, you can then do D mode to to turn it back to the original mode so my drive will be back in analog torque mode if you're on a stepper drive you want to type d mode 6 alternately there's d mode 7 which is step and direction but it flips the polarity of the direction line go ahead and type d mode and put it back the way it was that's stored in non-volatile memory power down walk it out and you should be good